Well, in person, um, he's really very warm and, and friendly. Of course, he says that the United States is making a devil of him. You'll see why, but then again, he invites it with his name calling. George W. Bush. You are a donkey, Mr. Bush. Hugo Chavez has had a lot of practice calling George Bush names. At the UN, Chavez labeled him a devil. El Diablo, Diablo, Diablo. His rhetoric is rooted in his politics and in his background. He grew up poor and powerless. Socialism. Socialism, he now believes, can cure the ills and poverty of Latin America. That revolutionary torch was essentially passed to him by his friend and mentor, Fidel Castro. Chavez first tried for power in Venezuela by leading a military coup in 1992. He failed, wound up in prison, but eventually made it to the presidential palace legitimately in a 1998 election. He rules a country of contrasts. Venezuela has astonishing wealth and an abundance of oil while almost half of its citizens live in poverty. The wealthy in Caracas hide behind high walls and barbed wire. They feel threatened, so much so that some of their children talk of leaving the country. So do you think that Mr. Chavez is good for the poor, but bad for you? No, no. No, he's bad for everyone. With the policies that Chavez has taken, has become a little bit more radical, and maybe, in my opinion, in, in Maybe a year or two, we'll have to all leave. Think you may have to leave? Yes. Chavez says private property is safe, but he's already nationalized some major corporations. He's also turned oil into a propaganda weapon in the U.S. You know, I had a lot of uh, cold days in my apartment. Help is on the way. Heating oil at 40% off from our friends in Venezuela and Sitco. Venezuela's state-owned Sitco is making affordable fuel available to hundreds of thousands of low-income Americans. I thank Venezuela for what they do for the poor here. <laughs> Hugo Chavez is 52. Although most often dressed in his revolutionary red, he was statesmanlike in a navy blue suit when we met in the presidential palace. There was no shouting and little rhetoric. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't have strong opinions. Mr. President, on a scale of one to ten, ten being the best, one being the worst, how would you rate President Bush's visit to Latin America? What number? Uno. One. Mm. Uno siendo generoso. One because I am generous, because it could be minus five. As I talk with you, you are a very dignified man. But we have heard you call the President of the United States a devil, a donkey, a drunk, a liar, a coward, a murderer. What does all this name calling accomplish? Yes, I call him a devil in the United Nations. That's true. In another occasion, I said that he was a donkey just because I think that he is very ignorant about the things that are actually happening in Latin America and the world. If there is an excess on my side, I accept. And I might apologize. But who is causing more harm? Do I cause any harm because I call him a devil? He bombs people, villages, and he invades nations. Fortunately, he will not remain in office for long. I would win an election campaign against Bush if I were an American, of course, if I were a U.S. citizen. If you went there now and ran, you could win the election, you think? If I were Hugh Chavez instead of Hugo Chavez, if I were a politician in the United States, I could win an election against Bush. La línea mía es la línea del humanismo. My line is humanism, respect for human rights, and I think that's what most U.S. citizens want. I'm positive that's what they want. George Bush does not struggle for this. He struggles and fights for other things. You have accused the U.S. government of trying to assassinate you? It is the CIA and some right-wing people here in Venezuela 
who believe that the only way they can control the revolution's impact on Latin America is to assassinate me. And I have said, if something happens to me, if I get killed, the President of the United States should be held responsible. Venezuela elected you to a second term. They would have to amend the Constitution for you to run for a third term. You want them to do that? Sí. Yes? Sí. And we want to make an amendment to the Constitution to have an indefinite election. But one of the basic principles is that if you want to eliminate poverty, you have to empower the impoverished people. It would be so nice if you could go to the barrios in Caracas and meet the people of the community council and you will see democracy acting here. We did go. This is Santa Cruz del Este, a poor neighborhood with houses stacked one atop the other. Gladys Garcia lives in a spare but immaculate apartment here. The bedroom? With her mother and brother. I've seen a lot of changes with President Chavez. Since Mr. Chavez, you have running water. Yeah, so you can do your laundry. Did you have toilets? Yeah, but no, but you could not flush. No, they carry the water. Carry the water. You see her face? There's pride and a welcoming spirit here. Walking the newly paved streets is safe, at least in daylight. But that's not true in much of Caracas. Violent crime in this city is rampant. Chavez blames it on the poverty he is trying to eliminate. His efforts are financed by a bullish market for Venezuela's chief natural resource, the running water here was paid for by free-flowing oil. I would like to talk about oil. Venezuela, of course, is the fourth largest supplier of oil to the United States. Are there any circumstances in which you would cut off your oil to the U.S.? There is no intention to reduce or eliminate that supply. But we have said, in case of any other aggression by the U.S. administration, we would cut the soil supply. But we expect this not to happen. I want to ask some questions about your life. Would you like some coffee first? I drink a lot of coffee, beyond any medical recommendation. More than 20 cups a day. But if I had to quit it, I would quit it. As well as I have quit so many intimate things. I've left my home. My kids, I see them every now and then. I left what is dearest to me, you know. I had to abandon them. I do not regret it because my life is devoted to the poor of the earth. You are not married now. Are you... Do you want to marry or are you married to the revolution? It's very difficult to marry. It is very hard to be married. I have been married twice. But I've got a heart here. I've also got blood running through my veins, you know. You, Mr. President, do not have the best reputation in our country. You know that yourself. What's the biggest misconception about you? I was speaking once with a lady in the United States, and she asked me, why are you an enemy of the United States? I said, why do you think that I am an enemy of the United States? Well, I have read the papers. I have seen your picture with Saddam Hussein, with Fidel Castro, and with Muammar Gaddafi. Fidel is my amigo. I said, well, Fidel is my friend. Hussein, well, I went to Iraq and I met him in a matter of state, but maybe you have never seen my picture with John Paul II, the Pope. The two times I visited him. All my pictures with Clinton, both times we met. They only published the pictures to demonize Hugo Chavez. I haven't caused any harm to the people in the United States. What could I do against the U.S. people? Or against any people of the world? We just want to be friends and we want to extend our helping hand. That's all. Mr. President, I know you speak a little English. Yes? A little bit? Would you give a message to the American people in English? I'll try. I will try. Yes, to the people of the United States. All the women, all the men, we, Venezuelan people, love you. 
we want, I want to be your brothers. I love very much a, gra a great leader of you, Martin Luther King, is my leader. You know, he said once, he said, I have a dream. His dream, Martin Luther King's dream, is your dream. It's our dream. It's my dream. Thank you very much.